everyone, my name is Anna Jackson, and joining me today is local author Kelly Mogger. She recently published her first book, and you know at the library we love new books, so I am super excited to chat with her a little bit today um, about her new book, her writing process, the, public, the publication process, because I know there are a lot of people out there who are looking to write books themselves, and maybe you want some tips on the self-publishing process. So Kelly is an expert now, right? So <laughs> I'm super excited that she's joining us today to talk a little bit about her book. So thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I know things are so crazy with quarantine and I'm glad we're able to do this. Yes, absolutely. So getting started, can you tell us the title of your book and maybe give us a short synopsis? Sure, so the book is called 15 Ways for New Moms to Manage Stress and Stay Sane. And I titled it the Actually Useful New Mom Care Package because I realized a lot of the things I read online were not all that useful to what I actually did as, as a parent in my journey. So I, I um, came up with 15 ways that I realized really helped me day to day and I thought I would share them. And so I wrote a book. That's fantastic. Um, and so I'm guessing by the title that the target audience is probably new moms, correct? Yes, yes. Anyone who has a newborn and then honestly anyone who's pregnant as well because moms who have kids now know it's so much harder to read once you've had that newborn. So someone who's in the second trimester, third trimester, this is a quick easy read to kind of give you a, like a heads up on how you might want to approach your days once baby arrives. Yes, I will just attest to that. I loved how the chapters were short, succinct, very readable and manageable if you just don't have a lot of time to be reading. You could, you know, read a chapter here, a chapter there, and I really like that aspect of your book. I thought it was fantastic. Awesome. I'm not even a new mom, but like, <laughs> I feel like there was a lot of really helpful information. Um, but going off of that, it looks like, you know, the 15 ways for new moms to manage stress, stay sane. There were so many practical ideas in that book. What is your specific background and how did you get so much in-depth knowledge about this topic? Yes, well, I, I joined the ranks of motherhood and then I was taken from that level of excitement and I was thrown into the fire because um, I had my firstborn child and then 22 months later, I became the mom of, mom of twins. Oh my. So <laughs> if you do the math in your head, you realize that the twins were born before my oldest turned two. Gosh. And I had a whole year of telling people that I have three kids and they're all under the age of three. So oh I really had to figure out how to manage my day. Um, and then I also don't have any local family. My husband works daytime hours and I was home with them all day. I chose to be a stay-at-home mom. And that experience, that you know, two, three years of just being right in the grips of it every single day, this is what I came up with. No kidding. I completely 100% know why you're an expert now. <laughs> and I have to say, you bring your kids into the library all the time, and you know, they are such a joy. They love reading, and so like clearly, I feel like you are an expert. Seeing the way your kids have turned out, you know what you're doing. So, they were so disappointed when I told them we couldn't come back to the library again. Oh no, I'm so I was like, sorry. we'll pick up books, but we can't go inside. And my oldest was almost gonna have meltdown. Oh no. <laughs> I hope we can open back up soon. So, cause we miss everybody. We miss you all. Uh, it gets boring with just librarians in here. <laughs> it's quiet, too quiet. <laughs> um, but you mentioned in your book, and I wanted to make sure that we touch on that a little bit, that you have a website that includes links for new moms. What all does that entail? Yes, all right. So you probably figured out, I come to the library a lot. I read a lot of books. And I have read a lot of books that are supposed to change how I act. It's supposed to be self-improvement oriented. Um, and I realized that I read the book, I loved information, and I was all ready to do those things. But after a week or two, you just, you get caught up in life again. And I didn't want that to happen with the book. I wanted people to stay engaged, to keep thinking about it, and then to be able to bounce ideas off other moms. So I created a companion website, which is free to join. It's a private community. And so you can go and you can talk to other moms about the tips, you know, what worked, what didn't, did you tweak it, um, or just, you know, someone to whine to about, because you need those days too. Um, and then as an extra incentive for people to join, I've got some freebies, which is what you're referencing. Freebies. Yes, so one of those freebies, let me make sure I say it correctly, because I want to say the wrong things. 
Um, one of them is just my favorite resources for new parents. There's a lot of stuff out there. The ones that I listed are mostly national, so it's not specific to Kosciuszko. I was going to ask that. So it's yes. available for everybody, no matter where they live. Just about. There are okay. some that are in like every city or every county, but sure. most of them are national programs or, awesome. or options. Yes. Um, and then also, <laughs> there's this really cute baby milestone tracker. Like you always try to figure out, you know, how do I count the first? How do I say what color was their hair and stuff, whatever. So I found a really cute one that I love. It's not mine, someone else made it, but I have a link to that. So if you're still pregnant, you can get it. It's frameable, it just looks really cute on the wall. Oh. Um, so anyway, sharing that one. And then I've also read a bunch of other books about raising children. And I've kind of pared it down to my favorites that I think are most relevant to different ages. So you get that list as well. And then the final one, kind of going back to the book, is I have a mental reframing exercise. So the days that you're just worn down, you don't have that support network you can lean on specifically, you can kind of go back to that and reassess how you're, how you're feeling mentally mm -hmm. um, and how, how to maybe go forward with the rest of your day. Awesome. And we will definitely put a link to that website in the video description. So if you're like, oh, shoot, I forgot what that was, um, there will be a link in the description below. So, yes. And I just checked out your website just a little bit before, because um, I'm like, oh, this is exciting. And there was so much good stuff on there. I'm telling you guys, you need to check out her website. Okay, so along with that on your website, not just all those really cool things that you can get for free, but you can also purchase your book on your website too, correct? Or are there other ways to purchase your book? Yes, so on the website, you can get in both an ebook uh, PDF format. You can also get a paperback copy. And then the website also has resources to buy it from your favorite retailer. So if you always use Apple, or you always use Kobo, or you always shop on Amazon Kindle, um, it's got those specific links, so you can find it directly there. Awesome. And just so you know, the library does have a copy available on Overdrive if you read eBooks, and we also have a paper copy on order right now. Paper copies always take a little bit longer to process than e-copies, so if you want to read a paper copy from the library, uh, give us a few weeks for that. <laughs> or just go buy one. So okay. Both options. Both options. Totally available. I'm sure if you wanted one signed, we could work something out, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. An autographed copy. Yes. <laughs> autographed copies are good. <laughs> so, but going on um, about your book a little bit more, why did you decide to write a book in the first place and why did you choose now to do it? <laughs> I mean, you sound like you're a very busy person. It's still very busy, um, but I, must, I bet you can guess the first reason. I had a lot more time at home. Um, all my evening activities were canceled and I realized that staying in front of the TV seven days a week every week was not the best option. Thanks, COVID. Yeah, so I was like, what else can I do? And then as, I feel like every bookworm has a secret hope to one day publish their own book. Like, read my heart. <laughs> my bucket list, like maybe one day. And I've always had that, but I don't have the next Harry Potter novel in my head. So instead I decided to write what I know, which is usually what people say to do. Yeah. Um, and so I wrote this book. The timing, reflecting on it, I think was perfect. Uh, my boys just turned two, my youngest, my twins, right when I decided to do this. So I had the perspective of being in the trenches still, like all that was still fresh, but they were also old enough now that they were a little bit more independent. I felt like I had a breathing space to be like, how do I want to focus my time? Yeah. Um, and so I kind of used that to my advantage. Well, I'm super impressed that you were able to write such a like interesting, helpful book while still in being in the middle of that time period. And you know, you'll talk about everybody wanting to write books. The only thing I know is like books again, like shelving them or putting them in order. And so I'm like, I don't think anyone wants to read that. That sounds terrible. Yours is actually practical. So, oh, fun, fun. Um, but so as you're in the middle of writing this book, the process, publishing, I feel like is a very confusing market. And yes. I know there's a lot of people who have wanted to write a book all their lives or have had multiple, you know, um, storylines going through their minds and maybe they've even written them, but just finally getting around and trying to publish it is very intimidating. There's so many self-publishing companies out there. How do you choose one? Can you tell us about how you went about publishing your book? 
Sure. So I knew up front that I wanted to have control over the most of the process. And I'm saying that partly because I want to be able to tweak it if like I found a typo later. I always hate when I read a book. I was like, oh, I wonder if they know about this typo. <laughs> Can I like write into the you know company? So I knew I wanted to be able to tweak it if I need to in the future. And I also knew I didn't want to spend a lot of time just managing that process. Sure. Um, and then the final part was I wanted at least the option to have it in ebook and print. And there's a lot of places out there that will do one or they'll do the other or they will do both, but they'll charge a fee up front. Yes. And that was the other thing I wanted to avoid. I, I really didn't want to spend a lot of money mm -hmm. until I knew how the rest of it was going to work. So I ended up, after doing all that research and kind of going down the rabbit hole in a few different places, I went with Draft to Digital. Draft to Digital. Yeah, so the okay. word draft, the number two, mm -hmm. and then digital. We can probably put a link to that down in the description as well. Yes, so they, as you can probably guess from the name, they were founded off of the ebook platform. Sure. Um, but I found it so helpful because A, there's no upfront fees. They only get paid if your book actually sells. So it's kind of more of like a commission-based structure. Oh, sure. Um, and then they also have a platform you, where you can decide the price and you can decide where it gets published to. Really? Yes. So I could have said, I don't want libraries to have my book. <laughs> I don't know why I would, but that wasn't Thank an you. <laughs> um, I could also say, like, I only want it published in the U.S. versus internationally. Oh, wow. Um, it, it gave you a lot of control over that. I didn't I realize was that was even an option in the ebook publishing. Yes. Well, and apparently you can change the price based on the market you're in. Oh, my word. So if I wanted to charge a different price in Germany, I could do that. Wow. Yeah. So I just, when I learned and I kind of got involved with that, I was like, yeah. this is the way to go. I have one account. They do everything mm -hmm. for me. Once I hit, you know, click for publish, They'll do all the distributing, they'll handle all the sales, and then I'll get royalties after they get paid. Sure. And that kind of allows me the time to say, try to market the book, and then yeah. put my focus back on the kids. So, didn't maybe I misunderstood this. Does Draft to Digital do the marketing for you, or do you kind of no. handle that? Okay, yes. That's what I thought. Yes. Getting, getting people to learn about the book is definitely my part of the process. Sure. Perfect. Understand. Um, man, though, that sounds so ideal, having all of that control and having the options. Um, libraries, other countries, wow. No. Um, that would be really cool if my book ever did get <laughs> somewhere way out there. I don't have that expectation. I'll but. see if I know anyone in another country who would buy it. So you can say it happened. Um, but that is fantastic. And because you don't see a lot of publishers now who do both the print and the e. It seems like most self-publishing companies I hear about are e-books only. Or, yes. oh, here, you can print a copy and they charge exorbitant fee up front. So, yes, and so their print portion is still kind of at beta phase. They're working sure. out some kinks, but it is available. And then, me as the author, I can buy copies at cost. Oh, very nice. Um, so, I'm not paying the real tell price to have a few copies on hand. Mm -hmm. And then, they actually help you a little bit out with the cover and how the formatting inside the book can look. Too. Oh, fantastic. So I'm assuming you've had a pretty good experience with them? I have. I mean, at this stage, I would recommend them highly to anyone looking to self-publish a book. That's awesome. Um, do you have any more books in the works? <laughs> <laughs> right now, my focus is on this one. My mother-in-law actually said she thinks I'd be great at writing a kid's book next, oh, but yeah. we'll, we'll see about that one. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, we'll be waiting um, on the edge of our seats. <laughs> Do you have any other advice that you would give to anyone who is looking at self-publishing their book or looking to start writing something? I would say it's worth trying. You know, don't let fear hold you back. Hopefully you feel confident in my answers. Like use draft to digital, for example. Make that process easier, a little bit less uh, overwhelming. And then even if the book, because of you know, the content or something doesn't work out, you're going to learn so much so that if you do have another story to tell, that portion of the process will run so much more smoothly. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, don't be afraid to tell people once you've got it going. That was one thing I did. I didn't want to tell anyone until I had, like, the published copy. Yeah. And then I realized, I was like, well, no one, no one knows this exists. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, my first, it was released in November, so I can tell you how many sales I had in November was, like, very, very small. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe advertise it a little bit sooner, and then... I feel like the library is just a wonderful resource if you have questions. Anna yes. talks about like reshelving books. 
they know what gets read. They oh, see yes. what gets taken out, you know, cover design or just genre if you're not sure what area you want to tackle. Well, thank you for that plug. Um, <laughs> and if you read Kelly's book, she does talk about the library a lot in her book. Thank you so much I, for that. I may have a crush on the library, I don't know. <laughs> Well, we try to be a great community resource to whoever we can be and however we can be. So um, thank you so much for joining us and just chatting a little bit about your book, um, 15 Ways for New Moms to Manage Stress and Stay Sane. Again, thank you to Kelly Mogger for joining us today. If you have any questions about her book, feel free to contact the library. We have her email. We can get you in touch with her. And we'd be happy to share any more information about her book. Like I said, it is coming in physical form very shortly. There is a wait list on the Overdrive copy. I know this because I tried to put myself on hold for it. So you may have to wait a little bit for that one as well. But there are definitely options. Check out her website. There will be a link in the description down below. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Anna.